I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be talking about the nonfiction shortlist for the Reading Room Award. Uh, last year, All the Single Ladies by Rebecca Traister won, and I think it's absolutely great. So if you haven't read this book yet, you definitely need to. It talks about the history of uh, single women in America, so that's pretty cool. But that's last year. Uh, this year we're going to be talking about the shortlist for the award. Again, it's the first shortlist that we've done for the award, so this is really exciting that we get to recognize so many different amazing female authors. So first up is Tell Me Everything You Don't Remember uh, by Christine Hung Oakley. This is about her memoir about the experience of having a stroke when she was 30 something, uh, like just turned 30, late 20, something like that. And uh, just the feeling of being trapped in her own brain. And she uses uh, Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five and the phrase being unstuck in time. And she actually um, reflects that in the structure of the book and she also talks about like what it's like for her husband to be like her caregiver and just so many different things about her life and how she felt like she was experiencing her childhood and her present at the same time and just what it's like to live with a chronic illness and you know as someone who does live with a chronic illness reading about someone who has this long-term illness and recovery time but also even now presently like still dealing with the effects of her stroke and it's just just so beautifully done and there aren't that many stories about especially young people who experience severe health issues. Uh, this book really wowed me and I really connected with it. Um, as you can tell there are all tabs in this book so definitely go check this one out if you haven't already. And that's out from Echo um, in the US and the next one is Inferior uh, by Angela Saini. This is How Science Got Women Wrong and the Research That's Rewriting the Story. Um, this one is about the history of science of studying women and it's basically all of the sexism that went into it. Why women aren't in the sciences and how just so much, well just sexism is in you know scientific research and study and all the different things and I was just so wowed by how sexist like huge historical figures in science are like Charles Darwin thought that women evolved to be lower beings than men. They were legally minors like you know they were because they physically just were not as awesome as men or as smart and talented and blah blah blah. So she really takes a look at that and I think one time I think that she really takes a look at that and I think one thing that people can fall into the trap with is that uh you know, they make it too sciencey, but this is a slim volume and it's basically just an overview and she gives you all the resources you need to do further study if you want and I felt like she didn't over science the thing and because I'm not a scientific person obviously so uh, I'm not really into sciencey stuff but I am all here for women who are and I just greatly appreciated this book for that. Um, another book that I uh, just was really wild by is The Fact of a Body by Alexandria Marzano Lesnovich. This is out from um, Flatiron and by the way Inferior is out from Beacon Press before I forget. Um, but this one is about Alexandria's journey um, she, and when she was in law school she met this guy Ricky Langley who was on death row for um, molesting and killing a young boy. And so she's against the death penalty and actually she was working for a nonprofit that tried to help people on death row get just life in prison. And um, she realized that she really hated Ricky Langley and she wanted him to be on death row and how that conflicted with her personal beliefs, her feelings and her beliefs and how that um, came from her childhood. And I don't want to talk about too much more about this book because it'll be a spoiler, but she really does an amazing job of paralleling her childhood and Ricky's childhood and just all the different things. And she really asks the tough questions. This is a beautiful book uh, about a really tough experience to read about. There are all the trigger warnings for all the things in this book, so just be aware. But it's beautifully written and what she does with time and structure is absolutely gorgeous and I read this in like two sittings. Um, it was really compelling and it is definitely, as I, as I was about to say, this is definitely one of my favorite nonfiction books of the year, obviously. Obviously it is. Good job, Kendra. A next book is The Best We Could Do. This is a graphic memoir by T. Bui, and this is about her experience as a Vietnamese refugee. Her parents uh, and her family left Vietnam uh, shortly after the war ended, and they came over to the United States. So this is her parents' childhood and their experience before the war, during the war, and after the war in the States, and how she has come to terms with that. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, you can't see this on the podcast, so you can only see this here, but this is some of the art. Um, you can see she uses a lot of pastel, like watercolors. She uses a lot of um, color and she uses a lot of orange and pastels and like watercolory things and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think it's so incredibly beautiful and um, 
I just have been wowed by this book and I couldn't be happier with it and I think it's just a beautiful story. One of the primary reasons why I really think this book is super important is because as T. Bui and as an American who immigrated from Vietnam, she knows the war from a very different perspective. I think oftentimes we look at the war from a military white person perspective rather than the Vietnamese people's perspective and so she does a, does a great job of talking about all the difficulties with the war and all the contradictions and paradoxes, so many different things in this book and so definitely go check out this graphic memoir, The Best We Could Do. So Autumn is actually taking photos of the rest of the book. So there's two more books that um, I don't have with me and that is, the first one is Reading with Patrick by Michelle Kuo and that was out from uh, Random House and I thought it was so beautiful. This is a story about Michelle whose parents immigrated from Taiwan and so she um, went to school and then graduated, um, I believe, graduated and decided to go down and join this organization that went to lower income schools and they were kind of like half volunteers to go to these schools and teach. And so she went in and her class is mostly African American students and so she thought that she knew what they needed to learn and all these expectations of teaching them. She also talks about the difference in history of racism against Asian Americans and she parallels that with African Americans and just the differences there and I thought she had a very nuanced and very unique perspective on life um, in the Mississippi Delta like Arkansas where she was teaching. That's kind of like part of the book. The other part of the book is her going uh, later and finding Patrick who is one of her students because eventually she does leave and then she goes back um, for different reasons and so she reads with him and she starts teaching him literature as uh, for various reasons I won't give away spoilers but it is so incredibly beautiful and I just absolutely loved this book I thought it was just so beautiful and she did such a great job of um, like kind of correcting herself and kind of like scolding past Michelle Quo like I thought this thing and wasn't that stupid and it was just really beautiful um, so that is definitely to go check out Reading with Patrick by Michelle Quo. The last one, of course, um, Autumn also has this one, um, which is Hunger by Roxane Gay. This is a beautiful, beautiful memoir. Um, it's out from Harper and it's about her life. The, the uh, subtitle is A Memoir of My Body and it's the story of how she related to her body after she was gang raped by her boyfriend and a bunch of his friends when she was about 12 or 13. And so it, yes, it has all the trigger warnings, but she also talks about what it's like to live life as a fat woman who's like over six feet tall and just how spaces aren't made for you and just the different ways that she interacts with her body and with culture and so many different things. Her writing is phenomenal. Everything about it is brilliant. We just love this one. We love all of them, obviously. But yeah, definitely, definitely go check out this book by uh, Roxane Gay. So that is all the books on the nonfiction shortlist. I would love to know if you've read any of these or if you plan on picking any of them up. Uh, these are just beautiful books. So I will be back with the winners when they're announced on December 6th. Um, I'll probably like whatever Friday that is after it's announced. So I'm really excited about all of these and I think they're definitely all worth looking into. So if you haven't already, please check them out. And I guess that's all for me. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.